What's up everyone? It's Tim Rizling back with a video. So I was going to make a video updating you guys about my semester, but so many unexpected series of events have been happening. I thought it was necessary to make a video on this topic. So as many of you know, at least I hope you know, uh, we are currently going through a pandemic. So in terms of just like updating you guys on my life and how it's affected dental schools all around the world, I just want to give you guys like a timeline at least with my particular dental school of how everything took place. So in like early to mid February, one of our professors actually gives a lecture just to educate us as to what was going on. So in that lecture, he told us like, hey, like our school used to buy masks for $2 per box. And because of this virus and because of the low like supply of them, like now it's like 75 to $100 per box. And we were all just like, whoa, what? Like it increased that much? And yeah, he was telling us like, hey, it's 75 to $100 per box. So we have to limit you from how many masks you can take out from materials management, which is where we get all of our supplies. So we're just sitting there like, damn, we can only check out one mask a day. So for us, it was just very frustrating. Like, hey, like we're paying, like from a student standpoint, like we're paying all this money and we only get one mask a day. Not really understanding like the severity of this whole situation, right? So this happened early February. So then fast forward to March 10th. So yeah, I'm sitting in my apartment. Um, I'm trying to prepare for a clinic the next day. And then I get a notification on my phone and it's like, Michigan has just reported it's two confirmed cases of coronavirus. And I'm just sitting there like, damn, it's here. So the very next day, my classmates and I, we go to Top Golf, like not really thinking anything of it. And then one of my classmates, he, he looks at his phone and he's like, hey, the NBA just canceled its season because Rudy Gobert of the Utah Jazz had just tested positive. And I'm there sitting there like, damn, the NBA season got canceled? Like, that's my life. Like, I don't know if you guys know, like, I'm a very big, like, NBA historian. I follow the NBA every single day. Like, I'm a very big basketball fan. So when he told me that, I was just like, damn, no, the NBA is gone. Like, spring break is coming. Like, that's literally what I was going to, like, spend all my time, like, looking at, blah, blah, blah. Like, I was just like devastated. <laughs> but yeah, so he was like, yeah, the NBA just canceled its season for like two or three weeks at that point. And obviously that was all over social media. And then on that day, like travel bans were taking place and obviously the NBA was canceled. Fast forward a couple of days. So at our school, spring break started Saturday of March 14th. So the University of Michigan that week had already canceled their clinic and simulation lab classes up until like mid to late April. I was just like, wow, your administration's already taking initiative to cancel classes that far ahead. Like, like there's only been two confirmed cases at this point. You guys are already taking that type of initiative. And, and like, obviously like these students were frustrated. They're like, hey, like I would much rather have like all my classes remote and then go into sim lab. But the fact that everything's remote and we don't even know how sim lab is gonna end up or how we're gonna make it up. Like that's just very frustrating for us. So I was just like, yeah. Like I would not want that happen to us. So yeah, March 14 comes by and that weekend basically our Dean just tells us like, hey, we're monitoring the coronavirus cases and we're just gonna take it day by day and figure out what we're gonna do. Obviously you guys are on spring break and we're gonna take this time to basically evaluate the whole situation and how it's gonna pan out. So yeah, when the first confirmed cases in Michigan happened and the coronavirus got a lot of media attention, um, our professor basically sent me emails like all over the place. They were just like, hey, like um, the rest of the semester is gonna be remote. And these were for didactic classes, right? They're like um, expect that all your didactic classes will be remote and you'll still have to come in for sim lab. So that was like when spring break started. And then four to five days later, you know, obviously like when I learned more about the virus and I learned more that like we as a country and obviously like the state of Michigan like weren't really testing for it. And the only tests that were really available were for people that are like exhibiting symptoms and for people that really needed it. I was sitting there like, yeah, like I'm thinking we're probably not gonna go back come spring break like in my head. So three days pass and then I'm at my gym and then um, the manager at the gym at that particular time was like, hey, like you need to finish your workout. Like we just got a notice that like all gyms in Michigan have to shut down at 3 p.m. today. So I was just sitting there like, if they're making all gyms shut down, 
Like there's probably a good chance that we don't have to go back to school. So we got a message from our dean and then faculty members from our administration basically stating that like, hey, like this coronavirus issue is a lot serious than we thought. Like at earliest, we probably won't be back until uh, April 13th. And they're basically telling us like, hey, like we'll probably have to make it back. Um, utilizing the breaks that we gave you, like you'll probably have to be like in school for that, blah, blah, whatever. And that was the first week of all this. And then you fast forward a couple days from that email, um, our governor basically just shuts down like uh, the majority of businesses. She deems like seven or eight types of businesses essential. And I think that was the Monday or Tuesday of our spring break. So it was like March 16th or 17th. And yeah, the gyms were closed down. Like I couldn't even go to my barber to get a haircut. Like, so basically like only essential business were open, which were like grocery stores, you know, like pharmaceutical stores, whatever the case may be, whatever like the category essential businesses were. So yeah, so then later that week, we basically received emails um, from our professors like individually saying that like, all right, all of your didactic courses are going to be remote for the rest of the semester, which was like, for me, it was expected because like, um, when I learned that like we haven't been testing as well as we should be and there's probably more confirmed cases than we know like I'm like there's probably a good chance that like I don't return like for the rest of the semester but then like obviously our sim lab coordinators they messaged us and they were just like yeah like um, we're gonna do the lecture portion remote but obviously you guys can't come in so like we're gonna wait it out week by week and basically just give you guys updates so yesterday, um, I woke up and I received an email from my dean and he said at earliest, we are not able to go into the school and open up clinic or like sim lab, whatever for us until May 26th at earliest. And I'm honestly shocked because today's April 4th that he made that decision so quickly, but Honestly, it was expected and like obviously I completely understand because in Michigan today, so as I told you guys, our first two confirmed cases were on March 10th. Today, which is April 4th, and uh, this is going off yesterday's confirmed cases. We have 12,744 confirmed cases and 479 deaths, and we are the state with the third highest confirmed cases in the United States. So obviously like just seeing those statistics like you know, like if from an administration standpoint, I don't know what else they could do. Like this situation is so unprecedented. And in my opinion, like unless they're able to come out with a vaccine or treatment for this disease, like I don't know what else you can do because we can be at home for three to four months. But the moment we leave our houses, like, you know, there's a chance of it spiking again. Like it's like so many people have already been infected by it. Like, if you let everyone out of their homes and release the rules that have already been placed, like it's probably gonna spread just as fast again. It's crazy because obviously like there are, there are dental students like prior to spring breaks that were five weeks away from graduating. And because this whole situation happened, like they're not able to, they're not able to finish their requirements and classes. Like they're basically stuck at the school and obviously they don't really know what they're gonna do. And the whole thing with this situation is like, there's no timeline for it. We're able to flatten the curve and decrease the rate at which people get it because our hospital facilities are gonna be overwhelmed and there's not gonna be a, enough doctors and hospital beds to treat those particular people. So the whole idea of flatten the curve is to decrease the rate at which people get it to prevent that from happening. It's just a very tough time for us and like everyone globally. So. I really hope that this will end as soon as possible so the world will be back to normal. We all have to take the necessary precautions to prevent this disease from spreading. Uh, the World Health Organization and the Center of Disease Controls has all that information listed on their website. I'll make sure to link it down below. But yeah, guys, uh, thank you guys so much for watching this video and hope all of you stay safe. I just want to give you guys an update on what's going on in my life and how it's affecting dental students. but. Obviously, as you guys know, like, it's really just affecting us all. Stay safe, you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. Continue social distance and have a great day.